Yeah. What, yeah. What's the use? I, th I think at the Senate, there's like nine Republicans in the whole Senate or eight or something. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, actually. Massachusetts is ridiculous. I, I, tend to, I tend to skew to the left on most topics, and, but, I, but my, my response to what you're saying is, 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 again, it's more nuanced simply because, you know, just because you have a majority of Democrats doesn't mean – because like any other state, um, we have all these other factors that get involved on whether or not the votes go the way we want them to. Um, urban versus rural, that's a problem for just about every state, um, especially ones with a lot of high technology and whatnot like we are um, here in the Northeast. Uh, geography, geography plays a role in politics. And, and I mean specifically whether or not you're going to get uh, various types of funding, whether or not you have uh, a nominal amount of political power in, in the House, in, in, the, in the Senate. You know oh. what I mean? And so just because we had – now, for someone like me who skews to the left, that doesn't it, – it, it's not as simple as saying, so, you know, most of the time the way votes go it actually works out for a guy like me. Actually, uh, it, it, there's a lot of times it doesn't. Uh, it's not so much because people on the left are compromising. It, it usually, and interestingly enough, has to do with the fact that they're, they're not compromising and that there isn't a lot of uh, vigorous debate on certain issues. Or it just doesn't go the way it should for Central and Western Mass. Not to not to victimize us. I hate doing that, and I try to avoid language that does that. But there are there are still sort of vestiges of that whole of, of us not um, not being heard or are uh, the, the allocation of resources as they come back out and spread throughout the Commonwealth. They, they're not necessarily. Yeah, I'm. I'm just saying. You know the. Massachusetts is a pretty good state. I mean, I, I like living here. You know, it, first of all, it's probably one of the most beautiful states, um, and and I think it's a good state. But 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 I, I, I'm a, I'm actually talking about a voter who's considered consider considers him or herself conservative or Republican even. A lot of them say, "What's the use of voting?" For for the Republican, what's the use of voting for the Republican? Like for senator, for instance, this you know, it, it, it's on. I mean, we we had an anomaly a couple of years ago, Scott Brown, but I mean, or or rep. That's the better example for the United States Congress, for instance. You're not going to get you're not going to get a Republican. It's so so, so at the polling booth, like what is it, Markey? Markey's running for senate, right? There's, yeah. there's no way he's going to get challenged by anybody. There's, He's going to get ninety percent of the vote, probably, right? Why would why would a Republican or a conservative go out and even care to vote in that race in Massachusetts? No, it's, and it's not just that; it's every, it's every Congress person. Well, but you can say the same thing about all those unenrolled voters too. You know, so where's where, why why should they have the ambition to vote for that person? I, I, you, I, I don't think you should ever vote for somebody or not vote for somebody based on whether or not they're going to win you should have a set you should have a mature set maybe this gets to education which i believe is fails us miserably in in the areas of politics uh and having a filter for uh determining certain things and having the confidence to step forward with your ideology and with your set of priorities you know in place I mean, you should never vote for somebody based on whether or not they're going to win. But you have to have a no, no. I I agree, but I think you have, to have a game plan for yourself in the first place as a voter. To I agree, I, I'm not one of these ap apathetic voters who just say I put, throw their hands up and not vote. But I think the explanation for why you see 80 percent of the voters not voting is one of the reasons is that they don't have anybody to vote for. And, and, and I said it earlier, a lot of a lot of the so-called independents or on a road are conservative minded people and they just don't go to the polls. I'm thinking because they don't have any conservative people to vote for. It, a lot of times there is th there's very little competition for any of the Democratic candidates. I mean, I, I don't even think uh, I mean, we, we see that all the time, like especially for U.S. Congress. It is quite it is quite remarkable in this country, um, in statewide one party systems, how often the sort of losing side in that the minority party, it's you got to look and you got to say there's X number of million people in this state and this is the best we can do. You know, what I mean? <laughs> like where where's the talent? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Well, you, you can say that at the federal level. 
<laughs> you can say that in the, in the presidential level. No, I, I mean, where's I mean, the talent? Where's the talent? So take it to the national level, right? You know, huge chunk of the population unenrolled. They could go either way. And look at the, uh, and this is at least a 40 year phenomenon. And I'm more up on the history of how the Democratic Party, um, you know, through its evolution and through the evolution of neoliberalism, how, how they've sort of disenfranchised people um, over, over the last 40, 50 years. But like, yeah, I mean, we're a country of what, 340 million people, 350 million people, something like that, mm -hmm. somewhere. Yeah. You know, like, th this is the talent? This is that with it? I mean, American Idol's better at, at picking talent, man. Well, part of that is, I mean, you you see people that are in Congress for 40, 40, 50, 30, 40, 50 years, right? It's because the lobbyists and the special interest groups are just going to keep them in there with the money. They're, they're not going anywhere because they're raising the money, they're raising all the money for the party. And there's no way they're going to put somebody new in there. So, I mean, it brings up the issue and we could go on and on term limits and um, uh, Citizens United and freedom of speech and whether or not uh, lobbyists and special interests and super PACs should be picking our candidates first. But that's what's happening. Do you think, do you think at the national level, by the way, I, that, um, that the, uh, the current climate in particular uh, encourages uh, unenrolled to stay home? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't I, think so. I think, I think the, the current system wants as many people to stay home as possible. Why is that? Well, uh, well uh, for one, a smaller voting block. Uh, the status quo? Tactics involved in uh in determining um president as an example uh the fewer people the more easily manipulated and the more predictable you can create a campaign i think there's a number of ways that they create um or at least attempt to create um predictability i think a lot of it oh, look at all the marketing apparatus uh which by the way goes back at least a century at this point you know the 1920s really heralded the modern marketing state you know by that time it became mature and it all and and the 1920s also coincides with the modern polling state in politics and so you have mo modern marketing apparatus melding with politics and 100 years later you get to where we are so i think there's a lot of manipulation through mass marketing again it's all about trying to limit vote the voters and to control the voting block as much as possible to to it, it be the aggregate result that they're looking for is to is to basically you know create as much predictability as they possibly can. Um, keeping it a two party system is another way, and so forth. I just I, and then if you get to the national level, I think that I, I, I just I get the sense that we want to keep as many people home as possible is kind of the rule of the day. It might be the case, uh, but I, I think you, you you hit on another subject, which is another sore subject for me, and and it's the and it's the polls. I mean. We all know that you can fashion a question any way you want. You can slant it a certain way by using verbiage and the lexicon. You can slant it a certain way so that you're, you're, the, the person you're polling, polling will give you the answer you want. And the other aspect of that poll, and the, so the poll comes out inaccurate. But then people will watch, oh, the, the latest poll said such and such. Well, and, and it influences people. Um, and I don't think it's a fair influence. And the other side of that is that um, uh, on the polls, th they'll say, for instance, you know, the 65% the of the Americans think uh, Donald Trump is doing a bad job uh, managing COVID, for instance, right? Just to use an example. And, and people go, oh, you, and then you'll see the, the uh, liberal news stations, which is just about all of them, saying, oh, 65% of the people, whatever it is, 70% of the people think Trump is doing an awful job. But they don't ask. So... But did you ask those people what news they watch at night? Because if you ask them and they said, well, I watch CNN and MSNBC all night long. Well, of course, they're going to say Donald Trump is doing a bad job managing COVID. So it's, it's sl everything's slanted. So when the point is, when you see a poll result, people will go to, like, like I was saying, this guy um, that, that I researched, he's saying that for a lot of the independents or, or the people that are undecided, they wait for a last minute poll or a last minute event like a random event like Hillary Clinton get getting called um, called into an investigation I think it was the FBI right 
They need something like that, and it slants them at the end. At the, at the end, they don't know what they're going to do. They don't follow politics. They're not really interested in it, but they wait for that last thing. So they wait for the last poll. The poll comes up and says, "Oh, Donald Trump's getting hammered in every state," and they go in and they vote for the other side. These polls aren't good. I don't think. I don't. I don't see what's any any good. I'm going to 